Mr. Speaker, our first floor presentation is House Resolution Number 198, congratulating the Hawaii State Commission on the Status of Women for its 50 years of commitment to creating equality for women and girls in the state of Hawaii. This resolution is offered by Representatives Bilotti and Thielen. Thank you very much. Representative Bilotti. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of the resolution. Thank you very much. Representative Thielen. I second the motion, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. It has been moved and seconded that the resolution, House Resolution 198, be adopted. Any discussion? Representative Bilotti. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move for the adoption of this resolution. Please proceed. On May 15, 1964, Governor John A. Burns had the first foresight to create the Hawaii State Commission on the Status of Women by executive order. In 1970, Act 190 codified the commission into law. For 50 years, this commission has served as the central clearinghouse for resources, services, and advocacy for women and girls in our state. I could speak for hours as to the ways that the commission has enhanced the status of women, but for the sake of brevity, I will name just a few. Immediately out of the gate, in 1972, the commission created Hawaii's first task force to investigate sex bias in education, an important step towards ensuring that girls and women have equal access to education opportunities. The Commission also blazed new trails by creating a task force to investigate the status of female offenders in the criminal justice system, ensuring that women and girls received equal treatment under the law and that the statutes were enforced without prejudice based on gender. Advocacy has always been and is one of the Commission's most important and noteworthy contributions. The Commission vigorously advocated for several measures on behalf of women and girls. The passage of the Patsy Mink Equal Opportunity in Education Act at the federal level, better known as Title IX, and the passage of 20, Act 206 in 2011, which prohibits workplace discrimination against victims of domestic and sexual violence are only two of the landmark pieces of legislation. These accomplishments are just a portion of the overall achievements and success of the Commission. The Commission's dedication and commitment to serving the women, girls, and by extension, all families and communities of Hawaii is truly remarkable. To understand the depth of the individual and collective work that goes on uh, with the Commission's efforts, I would like to defer to my colleague from Kailua and the co-convener of the Women's Legislative Caucus to introduce today's representative. Thank you very much, Representative Baladi. Representative Thielen. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. A program as successful as the Commission on the Status of Women requires remarkable people to be able to run it effectively. Today, members, we are lucky to have just a few of the stellar minds behind the Commission with us on the floor. I'd first like to honor Ms. Kathy Betts, if you'll stand, Kathy, thank you, the current Executive Director of the Commission. Kathy Betts was honored here at the legislature in 2012, we will remember, for her excellent advocacy and education efforts for Title IX and her involvement in women's advocacy is applaud worthy. She's worked in the fields of family law, violence against women, child abuse, and Title IX. Kathy also served as the Patsy T. Mink Legislative Fellow in the late Senator Daniel Inouye's Washington, D.C. office. She's a former Deputy Attorney General with the State of Hawaii's Family Law Division and currently serves on multiple boards, including the Board of Directors for the Hawaii Filipino Lawyers Association and the Board of Directors for the Hawaii Women Lawyers. Members, would you welcome Kathy Betts. Next, I would like to honor a longtime friend, Leslie Wilkins, the current chair of the commission. Ms. Wilkins is an experienced advocate for women, workplace diversity, and equity issues, and she currently serves as the vice president of Maui Economic Development Board and is a member of the University of Hawaii College of Engineering Dean's Advisory Council a member of the board of the YWC of Honolulu, and a national trustee for the Business and Professional Women's Foundation. Ms. Wilkins was the primary designer, launcher, and leader of the Women in Technology Project, designed to engage more girls, women, Native Hawaiians, 
and other underrepresented group, represented groups into the science, technology, engineering, and math pipeline. She's won many awards commending her achievements, including the 2001 SBA Women's Business Advocate Award for Hawaii and Federal Region 9, the 2005 International Economic Development Council Performance Award and a 2010 Maui County Woman of Achievement Award. Members, please let's all welcome her. Our next honoree is another longtime friend, Pam Ferguson Bray, the Executive Director of the Crime Victim Compensation Commence Commission. Pam previously served as the Executive Director of the Commission on the Status of Women, as a Deputy Prosecuting Attorney for the City and County of Honolulu, prosecuting family abuse cases and as a Deputy Attorney General representing the Department of Human Services in child abuse and neglect cases. She has received several awards for her dedication to women's issues, including the 1994 Hawaii Women Lawyer of the Year Award, and also received an Outstanding Achievement Award from the National Association of Commissions for Women for initiating the first month-long Women's Health Month. And Mr. Speaker, if I may refer, defer to my co-chair of the House Women's Caucus, Representative Bellotti, to honor the other two. But before I do, let's all welcome and congratulate Pam. Representative Thielen, thank you very much. Representative Bellotti. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like next, I would like, I would next like to introduce Ms. Allison Tasaka, who is the current Director of Operations for Governor Neil Abercrombie. Ms. Tasaka has a long history with the Commission, having served as a Commissioner from 1993 to 1996, Chair from 1994 to 1995, and as Executive Director from 1998 to 2004. During her tenure, the Commission received an Outstanding Achievement Award by the National Association for Commissions for Women, presented in recognition, recognition of the 1994 Women's Health Month Project held in Hawaii for the first time. Please, members, welcome Allison Tasaka. <laughs> Last, I would like to introduce Ms. Faye Kennedy, who served on the commission from 1993 to 1995. Ms. Kennedy recently re retired as a 10-year president of the Bipartisan Hawaii Women's Political Caucus and continues to serve on the Honolulu County Committee on the Status of Women. She's a proud recipient of, a, of the YWCA Leader Luncheon Award and has served on numerous boards, including the Hawaii Friends of Civil Rights. Members, please welcome Ms. Kennedy. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we also have several important women in the gallery today who have dedicated themselves to helping the women of our state. Please join me in welcoming the current and former commissioners we have with us today, Ms. Lisa Ellen Smith, Ms. Carmel Lim, and if they could stand. Ms. Amy Monk, Ms. Marilyn Lee, Ms. Judy Kern, Ms. Elena Kabatu, Ms. Margaret Matsunaga, Ms. Sally Little, Ms. Carol Phillips, Ms. Marsha Joyner, Ms. Kat Brady, and last but not least, Ms. Joan Husted. Mr. Speaker, thank you for this opportunity to honor the uh, Hawaii State Commission on the Status of Women on their 50th anniversary, and we hope and wish for them um, uh, a more successful 50 years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Members, any further discussion on a resolution before us? If not, let's go to the vote. Speaker? Representative Ward. I was yielding right away, but I wanted to single out two members of my community, Hawaii Kai, to acknowledge all their hard work, Amy Monk, and Marsha Joyner. Would you two stand again? Thank you for your service to the people of Hawaii and the community. Representative Cabanella. Mr. Speaker, as the chair of the Filipino Caucus, I would like also to uh, uh, acknowledge the work of uh, Ms. Amy Agbayani. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Representative. 
Members, any further discussion on a resolution before us? Representative Har. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and strong support. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as a, woman, as a female in the Women's Caucus um, in the legislature, I really want to recognize someone, our former colleague, who really did set the stage. And while we've had some wonderful replacements, um, she, when we think about the Women's Caucus in the legislature, she really was a steward. And if it wasn't for her efforts, we wouldn't have much of the legislation. So if we could please recognize our former colleague, Ms. Marilyn Lee. Marilyn, welcome. We miss you. Thank you very much, Representative Members. Any further discussion on a resolution before us before we go to the vote? If not, let's go to the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. The motion is carried. House Resolution 189 is adopted. Representative Bilotti, please proceed with the presentation of the congratulatory certificates and lays.